As you may have heard, we faced a much publicized dilemma in putting this program together. Many of the things about Satanism are offensive, and putting on an offensive television show was not our aim, so the most gruesome scenes have been left out. Now, what we've kept is strong. We think it's strong enough to get across an effective warning. Satanism can be cause for concern. Its roots are anywhere. Its roots are even in the very heartland of this country. Take a look. Carl Junction, Missouri, a town of about 4,000 souls in the heart of the Bible Belt, where people believe in God and the devil. Periodically, satanic graffiti and some mutilated animals turn up, causing alarmists to cry that satanic cults are operating in the area. Those charges were routinely discounted until a group of students from this high school shocked the entire nation. Late one night last December, four teenagers who had been dabbling in Satanism carried baseball bats, a cat, and a length of rope to an isolated spot near their small town here in Missouri. By the time the night was over, the cat had been mutilated and one of the boys beaten to death by the other three, who then dumped his body in a well. One of the kids who did it, Pete Rowland, is now serving life sentence without parole here at this maximum security facility in Fulton, Missouri. The other two boys, his classmates, were also sentenced to life. Had you ever been in Here, in the first school? interview since the murder, Pete Rowland talks about the satanic elements of the crime. What was it about Satanism that attracted you? Power. Just, you know, with power comes money, comes girls, just the feeling of people looking up to you, popularity. You're a good-looking guy, smart. Wouldn't you have those things anyway? It, it just seemed easier through the devil. The devil was the spur for this murder which Pete confessed on this never-before-seen police videotape. Yes. Go ahead and show us what you did. Okay. And I got over right through here, and I grabbed the old hand, and I pulled him through to right here. You saw the victim, there, and he was, he was still moaning a little bit and going, uh, uh, like, kind of like that. Right this bat here, Pete. Okay, this is the bat that I screwed. This is the third bat. Quite a bit of blood and hair on this thing. You can see a lot of hair on the end of it. Who all hit him? Me, myself, um, Jim Hardy, and Ron Clement. It basically started out, like, with the killing of animals. Then there's always the heavy metal music and drugs don't help. Sometimes I didn't feel like I was the master of my own body. Like something else kind of took over with inside of my mind. What took over? Just the violence, the devil, lust and greed for drugs, for money. Pete gradually withdrew from family life. That is probably one of the main things I noticed. Um, he even got to where he avoided eating meals with us. He listened to the music, heavy metal music, every opportunity. Another example of the link between heavy metal and teenage satanic crime. Describe what this music did to you. It, it's kind of like in the way of the, when we killed animals, it was just like, it would just go, things would go through my mind and I could see the thoughts, I could see me hurting someone, you know, torturing people. And just along with the words too, some of it was just all hell Satan and ripping apart, severing flesh, gouging eyes, things like that, you know. And after you listen to this, you know, three or four hours a day, every day for, you know, years or months, and it can get to you. Why did you choose this guy as your victim? Why Steve? Just because he was a human. Just because we could deceive him easy. The boy deceived was 19-year-old Stephen Newberry, who then took the first of some 70 blows as his classmates swung their baseball bats. I, I kind of looked down and I heard a pop and I just, I knew what it was. And I looked up and... And Steve's eyes were real big, you know. And he just said, you know, why me? Why me? And he just looked like he was really sad. And, and one of them, someone said, because it's fun, Steve. And then we just all just, just like vultures, you know. I mean, we just went in. It just, it happened. You hit him? Yes. In the head? Yes. How many times? A lot. And I look at my hands sometimes and I think, you know, 
are these the hands that killed him? And I mean, I know they are, but it just doesn't seem like it, you know? I, I don't want, you know, I would never want to kill anybody again. I mean, I, right after we did what we did, I just, I felt real empty inside. I felt like I could never love again, you know? I felt like a zombie. The devil double-crossed you? Yes. It just leads to your own destruction. How do you know that now? Look where I'm at, you know, look at my sentence. I mean, I'm in, I'm in jail with life without parole. I feel very guilty that I didn't pay attention, that, that I didn't... There were some things that I saw that I sh feel like I should have paid attention to. I saw the album covers, and they're hideous. I just assumed that if they sell it, it's got to be okay. Um, I saw satanic symbols on his book work, and I had spoken to him about it. Didn't mean anything, you know, it was... I assumed it was a passing phase. I had my things when I was that age. I assumed that he had his. I assumed wrong. And I would advise anybody, if they see anything like that, to look into it. Don't ignore it. It doesn't pass. It's just something I'll never get over, ever. Parents, heed the advice of Pete Rowland's mom. Pay attention. Satanism is not a harmless fad or a passing phase in some of these kids' lives. Ozzy. Yeah. I know that your lyrics are less excessive than groups like uh, Slayer or Venom or uh, Iron Maiden or some of the others, but still, for some reason, maybe it's because you've been around for so long, I see tattoos of your name on some of these uh, you know, teenage devil worshippers' arms. Wherever I see devil graffiti and satanic graffiti, I see your name also. Do you feel a sense of responsibility, Oz? The only responsibility I feel is, is the fact that I, I just, I'm, a, I'm a true musician in um, what I play. I don't, I don't want to make anybody start doing all this devil worship crap, because that's not my intention, although I have sang on a few songs about the devil. You know, that's about it, you know. I, I don't want anyone to harm themselves. What that's about the intention. issue of responsibility? What about the whole thing about guilt? Do you feel responsible? I don't, I don't, feel, I don't feel guilty. I feel um, kind of persecuted by everybody because I'm not a bad guy. I'm, I'm, it, my intentions are not to harm anyone. In fact, it's, dead, it's directly the opposite. Like when people come to my concerts, I want them to have a good, fun evening out, you know. And it's, it's, it seems to me that a lot of people judge the book by the cover more. more. So they, they write things about me where they don't even know that I talk, what they're talking about, you know. Well, there are lots of people out there, lots of people here in our studio audience who have a very different point of view. We'll get to them coming up next. A look into the dark soul of Satanism. Stay with us.